Adolf Hitler's top hat, sold for 50,000 euros. The buyer? Swiss Lebanese investor Abdallah Shatila, who says he bought the hat at a Munich auction to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. He has since donated the hat to Israel's official Holocaust memorial. But Shatila was not the only private buyer at the auction. And the rest chose to keep their identity secret. This is not the first time Nazi memorabilia goes under the hammer. But the large number of Nazi artifacts available today and the prices they fetch suggest an unprecedented rise in their demand. Something that raises alarm at a time when far-right politicians and neo-Nazi groups rally around these once derogatory nationalist symbols. These emblems and all these Nazi flags or whatever uh, they, uh, they sell or they buy, I mean, it was and still is Nazi propaganda, so in, in, in moral and ethical terms, I think it's highly problematic. But there's no denying that Hitler or his evil entourage ever existed. And some argue that trying to conceal objects associated with him risks erasing not only history, but also the evidence that supports it. It is a historical object like any other. The fact that its owner was a mass murderer is undisputed. But the things that belong to him and were part of his environment should not be mythologized by prohibiting their sale today. A lot of Jewish people collect World War II memorabilia. It's very evil items. I'm Jewish. I think it's very heinous, but it is an auction item, it is a memento, it's a piece of memorabilia and a piece of history. There's a kind that it is. But how can we guarantee that Nazi artifacts don't fall into the wrong hands? A handful of private aficionados do make their identities known. Take, for example, Kevin Wheatcroft a British real estate millionaire who owns over 80 Nazi tanks. Wheatcraft makes no secret of his passion for Nazi objects, and nor should others. If buyers seek anonymity, they likely seek it for a reason. Auction houses, on the other hand, insist the majority of their clientele consists of museums, libraries and state collectors. But if that were true, the market would not have been flooded with counterfeit products, seemingly aimed at novice Nazi sympathizers. One case in point is the trove of Nazi artifacts discovered at a private collector's home in Argentina last year. It was only after the items were donated and exhibited at the Buenos Aires Holocaust Museum that they were found to be fake. All in all, information about both the product and its patrons remains scarce. So, should buyers' identities be revealed? Or could that lead to an even more dangerous trade on the black market? Salome Fansel, TRT World. Alex Benjamin is here with me. He is the Director of Public Affairs of the European Jewish Association. Hi, Alex. So let's start with this. Should buyers' identities be revealed or not? What do you think? Uh, we think that they should. Uh, I think it's important that, uh, that security uh, services in countries know um, who, who is buying this stuff. Uh, um, it's, it's, it's vital that, uh, I mean, let's put it this way. If somebody was trying to buy Osama bin Laden, uh, I don't know, a uh, cape or, uh, or, or something related to him um, uh, or Anders Breivik's uh, toothbrush or something as trivial as this. You, you have to question the motivation as to why somebody would want this stuff. And a lot of the people buying this stuff are doing it because they sympathize or they glorify or they somehow identify with, uh, with Nazism or, uh, or the, what, 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 what happened during that period. 
Um, and we need to know uh, who these people are because mm -hmm. they, they're potentially a threat to Jews and Jewish communities. OK, Alex, imagine you know the names of all the buyers. What would you do with that? I mean, what are you going to do with the list? Well, I mean, it, first of all, it wouldn't be a list for us. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've no real interest in that, but it's, it's, a, it's an additional uh, security measure for, for the government. So they should, they should be aware of, uh, of who's buying this stuff. They should be uh, and not only who's buying the stuff, but uh, why they're buying it. Um, uh, and, you know, I would want to know, um, again, to use the uh, Osama bin Laden example, mm. I would want to know why somebody is interested in, in, uh, in buying their stuff. And, uh, and maybe uh, if there is an incident of, of anti-Semitism in a particular area, and it's been um, uh, perpetrated by a neo-Nazi or, or a, a neo-Nazi group, um, it might be useful at least to cross-check against a list of who's been buying uh, mm -hmm. Nazi memorabilia or this kind of a thing. It's, it's, it seems to make sense to us okay. uh, in order to do that. But as, as much as anything, I want to be clear as well, uh, if I may, um, we're trying to discourage it as well. So if people feel shamed, if people feel embarrassed by it, um, um, but, uh, being on the list, then that's a positive thing as well for for. Yeah, from our because point of view. I think there are a lot of buyers for that people to trade this uh, these, this paraphernalia. So, Alex, um, some people say that revealing the names of the buyers can lead to a more dangerous um, trade on the black market. What do you think about that? What do you say to that argument? I, I, again, I just want to be clear. It's not about revealing the names. They shouldn't be like a, a website somewhere where people can see who's bought the stuff. We're just talking about the security apparatus of countries like uh, police or uh, whatever the, uh, the the Turkish equivalent of MI5 is or where people can, where the security people can know who's bought this stuff. So if somebody buys this stuff, they're automatically registered. It's not like there should be a website somewhere where you can see who's bought this stuff because that, that leads to all kinds of problems in terms of privacy uh, and, 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 and that kind of an issue. But people should be aware and people should know that if they want to buy Nazi paraphernalia, such as Ava Brown's negligee or Hermit Goering's knives and fork sets, that they're going to be on some kind of a watch list uh, as to why they want this stuff. Mm -hmm. I just want to be clear again. There is, There are legitimate art, uh, uh, items of historical value, uh, for instance, uh, treaties or things that, I don't know, uh, that, 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 that somehow have a historical uh, uh, a meaning. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about trivial items, uh, such as, you know, cigarette cases uh, or helmets, or, uh, you okay, know, like Alex, I said, so and forks. Those trivial memorabilia, what do you suggest we do with that? I mean, sh should we just keep them just to like preserve them historic because they're historically important or should we just like burn and get rid of them or something? What are you suggesting? Well, I mean, fr from our point of view, I mean, if people want to have them, then yes, the, the logical place for them is museums. The logical place for them is museums if they have a, some kind of intrinsic value, but they shouldn't be available on the on the open market. They shouldn't be available for, for people who, uh, who admire the Nazis uh, or who support what they stood for to be able to buy and sort of keep in their mantelpieces. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely distasteful, not only for Jewish people, but I, I would imagine for yeah. many other millions of people who, who died in, and, uh, and during the wars, that somehow this stuff is, 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 is trivialized and, and sort of these little tidbits of, uh, of, uh, of, of memorabilia. They shouldn't be in the market in the mm. first place. I mean, auction they're, houses, they're, they're... in line with what you're suggesting, they insist that the majority of their clients are museums, libraries or state collectors. But do you believe in this? Uh, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I mean, of course, right now there's no way of knowing, which is why it's a good way of putting the, putting it on a on a uh, on, on a security list. I mean, for instance, uh, the guy who bought there uh, was a, a Lebanese businessman, Abdallah Chatila, uh, who bought um, almost uh, six hundred thousand euros worth of his stuff because he, like us, felt what is this stuff doing in the, in, in the marketplace? You know, if it's for museums, of course, uh, that's, that, that's fine, but we need to know. We need to know that it's not going into the wrong hands. So, uh, you know, of course, I say, if there's, if there's a legitimate case for, uh, for uh, something of historical value, but I'm really hard pressed 
I'm really hard pressed when I think about it to find why, uh, again, something like Ava Brown's negligee or jewellery belonging to Hermann Goering's wife, how any of this has any historical value. Okay, Alex Benjamin, point made. Thank you so much for joining us today.